You seem like a nice lot, you do really. In the, you do. You see, I met some of you last night, you all seem quite human, some of you. Um, in the interest of what Rose was saying about making friends, I thought I'd, this whole event about making friends, I thought I'd take this opportunity to invite you all to my room tonight. Is that, is that too much, too soon? <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I say, I like to, to call New York the center of the universe, I mean it. Um, I set my business up here, I was here for four years until last year, and now I'm kind of back and forth you know, based in London, but none of that matters. The, it is the center of the universe, and it kind of always will be. If you have to, I used to say to my sort of English friends, and they say, oh, how is it, how is it, is it, well, they didn't speak like that, how is it in America? And I said, New York's got nothing to do with America. You know, it's just not, and you have to explain. And so I used to say, look, imagine unfurling a map of the United States as big as the room you're in. This room will do. You just unfurl this huge map of the United States and then crawl on your hands and knees. I know you think I'm mad. <laughs> I'm laughing at myself. It's okay. And you crawl on your hands. You just have trouble trying to find Manhattan, which is what we call New York. It's weird. It's this tiny, tiny, I'm going to fall off the edge of the stage, tiny Galapagos, an experiment, a little granite Galapagos with the richest and the craziest and the, the maddest and the, the poorest people, all condensed into this tiny little hotbed, which is testing retail. It's no, there's no other place like it. Pe retail either thrives or dies here. And that's why, if you want to know about the future of retail, which is kind of my job, you have to come here. So if, number one, you've come to the right place. That's good news, isn't it? That's good news. <laughs> so welcome. Um, do you remember what it used to be like here? You went out shopping. The streets were full at Fifth Avenue. This is from my office window, looking down Fifth Avenue. The bustling city, the cabs honking, everyone angry, busy, everyone walking around with their Starbucks. Look, if, that, but the city was fantastic, wasn't it? Back in the day. Back in the day, well, this is the best diagram. This is the most in in integral diagram that I'm going to show you today. This was back in the day when we used to have to go out to get stuff. That's what it was like. We had to go out in the streets and fight our way through in order to locate and find and bring home stuff. Okay, is that a little bit technical? Because, I'm sorry, <laughs> having looked at all these charts and seeing them like, hmm, <laughs> if only I understood it. Um, but because today, so we've just learned stuff comes to us. Doesn't it? Stuff comes, it's ever so easy to understand. And as a result, as Jean, Jean Marc, Jean Marc, Jean Marc, why do you have two names? <laughs> Here's three. It's just awkward. These are all my, listen, I drew this little picture. Look, you know, I know it's sad, isn't it? But Macy's, Jean Marc said, they're closing like 100 stores and it may be more. In the UK, Marks and Spencers are closing like, Marks and Spencers? You know, these are like brands that we grew up with. These are like our mums. And they're closing 150 stores. And the same's happening to Pennies and Sears. So it's happening right across the planet. Stuff comes to us. Stores are kind of dying. And then look, do you remember FAO Schwartz, the, t the iconic toy shop at the top of Fifth Avenue, right by Central Park, the Apple store, and Tom Hanks, and... <laughs> you just think I'm mad. <laughs> Iconic store that everyone on the planet knew, and that every day, thousands of people with their screaming kids would wait to get it, but that wasn't enough. That wasn't enough. No, it died. It died a screaming, miserable death. So, very, very difficult time for retail. And then just to really cheer you up, um, shopping centres. Shopping centres are kind of dying too. And there's this lovely, if you don't know this, have a look. There's this guy called Dan Bell, and he breaks into shopping centres, moribund and dying ones and dead ones, and he breaks into them. And it's amazing. He's not sort of, he's not taking the mickey out. Does that make sense? Do you understand the word mickey? Because there's another word I could use. He's, he breaks into these shopping centres, 
and he films them and it's kind of a love lost. He remembers the days in the 90s when he used to drink there and eat there and meet friends there and there are these places with the escalators still moving, and fungus growing up the wall and st some of them still got the Muzak going and there's like, like all the stores are closed and there's a little sort of girl in a little, <laughs> little second hand shop sitting at the entrance like this on the you know pretense that this thing's still alive it's really sad so if you're not if you really want to cheer yourself up have a look at Dan Bell's Dead Mouth series on, on on YouTube so added to this we all know the next generation coming through we all know most of you are probably millennials now anyway I'm just you know old and the older you get they just can't keep coming through and then below that you've got the Gen Zers and the Gen Zers well they just want to stay in their room and they just want to order everything online. So they just want pizza from Deliveroo, basically. And that's so they don't want to go shopping. So that's the future of retail. As you know, you can get everything from Amazon. And they're working on getting it to you for within the hour, actually. So there you go. Job done. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> that's. <laughs> I'm sorry. I did say I'd try and tell you the realities, but it's just not true. It's just not true. And Jean-Marc talked about all this. I mean, look, the behemoths, if I could say the word, the behemoths, whatever, however you say it, online, Google, Amazon, they all want to be offline. They all want to come into the real world. There's something happening in the real world that they want. It's, this is a pop-up here. It's not here anymore, but it's crazy. How the, why does the online world want to have a slice of this? A slice of this failure and disaster. And Amazon, you know they're opening stores. Obviously, they have uh, you know, Whole Foods now, and they're creeping in Amazon Go that everyone talks about, everyone's scared of. They're coming into the real world now. Oh, my God, it's terrible. And now they started in books, and now they've got a real bookshop. I mean, how weird is that? Why did they bother? It's weird, isn't it? And we're all scared of it. It's like, oh my God, they're here. Anyway, it's a nice piece of retail. If you haven't seen it, go and have a look at it, Columbus Circle. And then you've got the online brands. There's loads of them. Bonobos, as Jean-Marc was saying, is one of them. And, and Warby Parker is probably the most famous. Printing money, printing money with these fabulous. This is an online brand. I know most of you know all this. I'm just here to teach my grandmother how to suck eggs, as they say in England. <laughs> There's online brands that are coming offline, they're coming into the real world and doing a fantastic job without the legacy of all those stores that they don't know what to do with. I don't know how we can do them, how we can refurbish 58 stores, 106. No, they're new and they come with new energy and they're revolutionizing the high street with fantastic stores. So, why? That's kind of my job, isn't it? To tell you about all this stuff, but try and analyze what happened. You know, what's happened? What suddenly shifted? And I think, I think it's, well, it's Kim Kardashian, isn't it? <laughs> it's so obvious. No, the truth is, the truth is it's this, isn't it? It's the little black slab of glass that we all got given about 10 years ago, because the smartphone, 3G is kind of 10 years old, and suddenly we all got given this little piece of glass. It's like religious, this little black slab. Of, it's funny how when I whisper, you listen harder. Isn't that funny? Anyway, this little black slab of glass that can get anything for you in the whole world. It's like God reached out to us and gave us. It, biblical it is, it's biblical. And it was the same time as the crash, so it's biblical. We suddenly got given this little device, which I call the great overlord of data, otherwise known as God. And when, when we reach, to, I'm careful, I'll wait for it. When we reach to touch that little round bottom, button on the bottom of your iPhone, other brands are available but only one, really. <laughs> when you touch that, so there's two, there's two. When you touch that little button, you are connecting like Adam to the finger of God, and you now have access to everything. It's true. Think about it. I kind of make it funny, but it's absolutely true. Not only that, it's God telling you that you are the center of the universe. You are the center of the year. And that's what we've got now. I'm trying to be funny a little bit, just a little bit cheeky. But 
This is the truth. We now have a customer who thinks they're the center of the universe. You've got to understand that. This is really, if you're in retail, you have to understand every single one of your customers, especially those Gen Zers coming up, they think they're at the center of the universe and they're incredibly entitled. We have to react to that. So I call it the me age. Mm. So here's the evidence. I'm not a little, because I've got so little time to tell you all this stuff. So here's the evidence. Smart brands have to put the customer center stage. Now, whatever you're doing, I can talk to you later, but whatever you're doing, you have to understand that. The customer has to be center stage. And in some of the clever brands, they're putting the customers actually on stage. Genius. When you watch H&M do this in Times Square, they're taking ordinary, ugly people and putting them. <laughs> Diversity is our strength, and I think it's a good thing. So they're taking them and saying, yes, you too can be a model for 15 minutes, then we'll get rid of you. But that's how it works, and they're bringing ordinary people can now take centre stage. There's tons of examples. I could show you a thousand examples. But as you all know, you have to appeal to what people really want, don't you? Rubbish. <laughs> Rubbish. What do they really what they really want is I don't know why my voice has gone like this. What you really want is an M and M with my initials on it. Well, don't worry, folks, because just a few yards from here in Times Square, you can order M and M's with your little initials on, so you can suck your little initial. <laughs> Weird but true, okay, weird but true. And better than that, better than that, in Worcester Street, Green Street, I've done a little map for you, by the way. I've done a little map which you can take home with you and, and go and get lost tomorrow, whenever you've got time, of all the cool stuff in New York. So this is one, this is a pop-up that's been around nearly a year, I think. And this is just genius. You go, talk about the me age. Ooh, what, what examples can I show the me? How about Doob? where you can have a 3D model made of yourself. <laughs> so I was amazed, but you walk in, you can choose the size, and you stand in this booth like this, or however you want to stand, and there's 70 lenses take pictures, and they build this thing, and you come back a week later, and there's a little, hello, hello there's you, little you. Little, little model of, oh, that's me. And it's a, I thought about getting one for my daughter, and I just realized how, what a nightmare that would be. Can you imagine she wakes up in the morning, there's a sort of model of me standing in the room. <laughs> but this is an absolute me age. It's fantastic, fantastic stuff. And it's happening right here in New York, not anywhere else. It's happening here, better than anywhere. And I want you to go out and see it. Bite Lip Lab. This is a little thing, it's a couple of years old now, right in the heart of Soho, where they make you a lipstick. They'll make it for you while you wait. And they'll build it, and you can choose your color, and you choose your flavor, and you choose your packaging, and they build it around your personality. I mean, it's brilliant, isn't it? I, how it makes money, I have no idea, but it's brilliant. It's talking the me age. Right in the heart of Soho again, uh, literally right in the middle of Broadway, the, the Converse store, the Converse flagships just sort of got a little bit bigger in size. In the basement there, that's the bit to go to, they've got this blank canvas project where you can go in and build your own. Converse, you can choose your little colors and can I have lace? I don't know, I'm doing that silly voice again, I'm sure. But you can build whatever you want and it all happens down in that blank canvas space in the, in under, under Soho. Brilliant, brilliant store, worth a look. So number one, what's happened with the Kim Kardashian, the narcissistic age and the me? Number one, bespoke, personalization, custom, and I've just given you a few examples all here in New York. Number two, the biggest thing, again, Jean-Marc beat me to it, really, but these are, this is how, what I call it. I call it the brand playground. We've got rid of the idea of selling stuff. We can get stuff. We can get it off the internet. It's dead easy. Stuff isn't the problem. Falling in love's the problem. That's what we need to do as brands. We need to build spaces, retail spaces, that help us fall in love just maybe for a few seconds. And there are tons here. Again, at the heart of Soho. Soho was just big for the last couple of years. It's not always Soho. There's some great examples elsewhere. My map gives you some good, good uh, advice of where to go. But this is a phenomenon. This is a new build store. Straight up from the ground, right in the middle on Broadway. And what can you do? Okay, what can you do? We can put the customer center stage. Well, let me do it quickly, quickly. Let me show you. Obviously, you can bespoke your Nike. Obviously, I mean, that's number one thing. 
obviously can go running with your heroes on the whatever the conveyor belt, run through. I don't. Why am I doing all this? Anyway, run through Central Park without getting mugged and all that stuff. Obviously, it's a love, lovely idea. But at the top of the store, you've got a real basketball court, and they take kids out there, and they're having fun. They're falling in love with the brand, aren't they? They're theirs for life. It's so brilliant. They're giving over that space, and then there's an interactive board that links you to, shows you what you did and how you played, and replays it, and then shows you where you can play basketball if you want to wander around New York, which are the courts you can play, all that sort of stuff. Interactive space. And then Adidas fight back. So they see, down in Soho, they see the Nike, and they go, holy shit. I can't swear, can I? Nike spending billions on that store. How do they do it? Well, Adidas, up on Fifth Avenue, nearer here, they've built this flagship, which is all about the stadium. It's even more urban. Actually, it's stripped back, concrete. It's a very cool store, designed by friends of mine. Doesn't matter, does it? And then there's a space we can kick a ball around. I mean, it's fantastic. So the brand play playground is alive and well. And that's all right for you, because I'm, I'm trying to cover some sort of my options here, because I know there's some cynical ones, guys out there. They're going, yeah, but that's all very well. That's all very well if you're in the world of Nike and Adidas, but well, but, well, not true. So Lululemon, Lululemon's flagship on Fifth Avenue, they have a club in the basement called the Lululemon Hub. And it's a hangout space. And yes, there's yoga classes, obviously. And yes, they, have, they invite artists in to do little exhibitions and seminars. They have book readings. And I went along with my daughter somewhere there. Uh, with, there was a, a film thing, preview of sort of uh, an independent filmmaker. There's just stuff happening because they understand they need to connect with you. It's not just selling stuff. Yeah, we got loads of stuff. It's all in a nice line. Help yourself. No, you've got a brand that we want to, thought, want to connect with and they're brand ambassadors and cool stuff and a space to hang out with. And that's why we love them a little bit. And then even, even in the world of, I don't know why I'm moving side to side. Even in the world of vacuum cleaners, I have to be careful I don't say Hoover. We call them Hoovers in the UK. Vacuum cleaners, vacuum cleaners and hair dryers. There's a whole floor in the brand new Dyson flagship on Fifth Avenue dedicated to the hair dryer. A hair dryer, as you probably know, is, costs about 30 bucks, doesn't it? I mean, roughly. These cost 500. <laughs> And you go around that space. It's like walking around the science museum and you learn about how they made it. It's also, oh my God, they tested it and they did that. I want one. <laughs> how, how much are they? $500. Oh. I mean, it's incredible. And it's a fantastic space. You must go there. And what do they do? Talk about brand playground. They have a selection of dirt that you can. <laughs> They have a selection of lovely, neat little dirt. You can, ooh, ooh, I'll try that. I'll try the soot. I'll try the soot. <laughs> a, am I allowed to? Yes, you can. Yes. <laughs> oh, it works, doesn't it? Brilliant. So even who, even Hoovers, I was going to say, even vacuum cleaners can become part of a brand playground. A couple of years old, but it doesn't matter. This is the best Ray-Ban store. It's on Green Street, I think. It's all on the map in the heart of Soho. Just remember, this store sells like six pairs of glasses. You could fit them on my lap. And they've got 6,000 square feet. And what do they do? They have an archive and a library. You can look at the old ones. You can build them yourself. You can put it together. You want. It's fantastic. And best of all, the me age. You have your little name. <laughs> Just uh, so that when you look in the mirror, you go, oh, that's me. And <laughs> whilst, while you suck a little m, &M. <laughs> My name is me, look, mummy, look. I exist. Anyway, a fantastic store. And Sonos, again, groundbreaking stuff. Online brand coming offline, going right into the heart, the center of the universe with an astonishing store where you walk into a sort of gallery of rooms and you go into each room and experience. Let me show you inside one of the rooms. Just fantastic, fantastic stuff. You got, once you're in there, once you've tried it a little bit and been treated with a bit of respect, you fall in love a little bit, and that's how it works. That's how they connect with us. The best of all, the best of all, obviously me, yeah. The best of all, 
Samsung opened in 2016. It's not new. I know some of you live here and some of you have been a couple of times. If you have not been to the Samsung 837 store, which is 837 Washington Street in the Meatpacking District, you must go because I would say, I like to put my head on the line, my neck on the line even, and this is the most important store in Manhattan in 20 years. This is a brand looking at Apple going, Nyeh. How can we outdo them? And then opening this incredible venue, a venue, this huge triple height space. When I walked in, the little phone took a picture of me, me and made a, a giant, on the giant screen, the giant LED screen, my picture is made up of everyone else's selfie. All matrix together. It's fantastic. Talk about the me age. You can't make it up. This is me, me, me. And it's absolutely, that's the first thing. And then it's a venue. They have bands and Moby played there and whatever and on the roof and stuff. So it's a space. And you, there's tons happening. So there's VR, obviously there's VR and there's roller coaster rides and there's a cool coffee bar. And there's even a running club. A running club. A Samsung run, because they understand they have to invest in the community. They have to build the love with you. They have to connect emotionally with you. We don't need a phone. We've already walked into the store with one. It's really simple. And best of all about this store, which I sometimes forget to say, you can't buy anything. So it's the absolute illustration. You can't. There's nothing for sale. It's a brand playground. It's come in, have fun, wander around, fall in love. It's a very, very important store. Little new ones. This is my girlfriend on a hamster wheel in the heart of, as you do. This is a fantastic new store. It's a New Zealand brand of, of sort of woolly sneakers, sort of eco-y sneaker things. And you try them on and you go on a hamster wheel at the back. And say, yeah, no, these feel nice. Okay. <laughs> it's just weird, but it's a playground again, and you enjoy it, and you come out and feel, yeah, I've had a little bit of an experience in there. And you mustn't miss, I don't know where this fits in, it's just astonishingly wonderful. Melissa is a, a Brazilian shoe brand, famous for sort of making shoes up, you know, the black, you know, the, what am I telling you? You know about it, you know, those big plastic shoes, they do Vivian Westwood stuff. This is their brand new flagship, again, Heart of Soho, 500 Broadway. It's like an art installation. You walk, it's like a mir mirrors and laser, you don't know what you're looking at. It's a huge brand playground. So, so there's me, I'm worn out now. There's me talking. <laughs> talking about the world of immersive, engaging spaces. And then I hear this news, it's, it's genius. Restoration Hardware, which obviously you all know, the most glorious furniture store right next to Flatiron, Midtown. Fantastic space. It's like they've turned that into a gallery. That's another kind of brand playground in itself. What have they done? Right in the heart of the meatpacking district, again, they are building, and it's more complete than that, they're building a hotel. How genius is that? So not only do you say, oh yeah, it's nice, but you sleep in the bed. You sleep in the bed, you sit on the chair, you switch off the light, and then you can buy it. It's genius. I mean, honestly, the example of an immersive space coming to life instead of just a warehouse full of stuff couldn't be better. And there's a huge trend at the moment in brands opening hotels. There's loads of other examples. I could talk to you for hours. I could bore you to tears. So. Um, West Elm are opening hotels there, for instance. So, isn't it kind of ironic what's happened here? Isn't it sort of obvious? It took the digital age, the fact that we can get everything, that Adam finger, we can get everything just with that touch of finger on the middle of my phone, to teach us what we want from the real world. It actually took that revolution to show us. And what you're seeing, what you're witnessing, are the death of the brands that didn't see that, that don't understand it, and that think that maybe if we can smarten up a bit and get a bit more efficient, we can hang on in there. They have to understand things have changed now. We've got enough stuff. <laughs> what we need are spaces to fall in love in. And that's what, it, that's what is happening in the heart of New York more than anywhere else. Immersive, engaging, 
connect, emotional connections with brands. Social spaces, so I've said it, okay, so it's kind of very, very straightforward and yet so many people out there don't see it. So that was my little rant to tell you you've come to the right place. You didn't come at the wrong time. But there's a few others I want to tell you about while you're here because I want to get you out there seeing New York, witnessing it actually happening. There's some unmissables. I don't know how they fit in. But look, this is fantastic. This is a brand new... Talk about disruptive brands. Do you know this, guys? Anyone know this? The Abnormal Beauty... The Abnormal Beauty Company, DCM, have this corridor brand new in the middle of Soho, again, Prince Street, look, I've left you the address, and it's a kind of post-apocalyptic corridor, and they had an artist sculpt all this and break all the, 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 the concrete surrounds and everything, and you basically walk down this corridor at the back of the store, then there's the, there you go, there's the broken tile, that is an artist did that, you've got to go and see, it's a brilliant store, you've got to see it, it's genius, and sorry, that's an, this is another one, and at the back of the store, there's all the product, and the product is you know, luxury and pr cheap. <laughs> value luxury, value lux. It's incredible. So it's a really good, smart product that's out to disrupt the, the market. And then there's another one if you're in the beauty business. I thought this was great. This is just off Union Square. It's a Korean brand called Innisfree. And they've just got a brand new, really nice flagship, a little bit interactive in places. They've got the sort of top tens in there. They, you know, it's a nice retail concept job. And I, you know, I kind of appreciate that. And then, don't forget, if you're walking around Soho, you must see the Webster. It's a bit posh. It's a department store. So whilst we're seeing the death of department stores, it doesn't mean they're all dying. Actually, you know, Selfridges in London's doing very well. There are Dubai and Coffs doing very well in, in Amsterdam. This is, the, this is the interesting thing. There's a reason for that, and we can't get into it here because I've only got a couple of minutes left. <laughs> However, in the heart of Soho again, on Green Street, is that right? Worcester Street, Green Street, the Webster. And the Webster is a small boutique department store. Super sexy, glorious. You mustn't miss it. Please don't miss it. And I thought I'd end showing you one that's just so established and is worth a revisit. Tiffany's. Tiffany's, I don't know if you, you know, we've all watched it for a thousand years and we all know of it, but how often do you go in? Well, they've just had a whole refurbishment on the third, fourth floor, wherever it is. They have a gift space, which is a gift room. I'll show you that in a minute. Just glorious. All the stuff you don't need. Remember that. And then <laughs> there's nothing you need in this store. I can promise you that. And then best of all, breakfast at Tiffany's and all of that. It took them years to actually do it. And now they've got this tiny little cafe. We can have tea at Tiffany's and there's a waiting list for a year to get in there. And there's all these little Japanese and Chinese kid, girls in there waiting. I mean, there, it is the center of the universe. Yes, I had breakfast at Tiffany's. It's fantastic. And it took, I can't believe it took them so long to do it. But it's a really nice little cafe, which you won't be able to get into. <laughs> I just thought I'd add that. Um, and look, the gift floor is just fantastic. All the stuff, I just wondered why they didn't do this. The brand is so powerful. And why didn't they do this? So it's just all the things you need, including including a dog bowl for like 500 or more, $750, a silver, obviously in it, so I hope to see you all later with your Tiffany bags. So that's kind of my roundup of, of New York. I've got a little map, as I said. On the, look, they're waving at you at the entrance there. <laughs> and I, basically, I can't do a map of Manhattan, small though it is. In, in summary, the new stuff that I've talked about today, largely in Soho, if you landed woof, right at Bloomingdale's in the middle of Soho, you're a few yards from each of those things I talked about, then get over to Meatpacking to see Samsung if you haven't been. Go downtown to the financial district to see the new Oculus space and the new the second Italy in town if you haven't been to the uh, to Westfield World Trade and go uptown to see like uh, the Dyson and the Adidas. Okay, thank you very much. Enjoy New York. Can I just say, follow me on Twitter and see you in room 3026 later tonight.